How you doing this evening, folks? And welcome to another round of the Ordinary Men Who Fight Like Heroes podcast. I am Chris Fearing, and I'm joined at the table by... Drunks and Dragons and Aaron Bass. Alright, so this topic for today, because it is in the month of October, is going to be spooky movies. I'm not doing the whole cast in, like, fucking ghost Ooh. voice. That would be awful. Just sitting here, watch this movie. <laughs> By, like, two minutes in, everyone's like, okay, fuck off. And then it's off. <laughs> You're not even listening anymore. I'm gonna even fucking if... watch this video on the sidebar that sucks dick, but they, not, they suggest it, <laughs> so I'm gonna fucking do it. Yeah, but... Yeah, no, there's tons of there's tons of really good horror movies to watch this time of year, and there's tons of really good horror movies you should have already watched, maybe, hopefully, maybe, like, draw a blank for a second, and it's like, uh, that's, that's the, this uh, is the point VHS where it gets quiet. Films. Fuck yes, VHS. Yeah, yeah, VHS, which, by the way, they're not making another one of those at the moment. They're making another, uh, they're making a second, no, wait, I'm stupid, they are yeah, making another one. Yeah, they're making VHS viral. Yeah, they're making VHS viral, but it's not like three. But I'm like, it's, I think. But it, I think it's it, gonna be three. It is, it is yeah. gonna be like three. Because before two came out, it was called SVHS. That's right. That's true. But no. So, anyway, VHS, VHS two, VHS virals coming out. Uh, small. It's uh, the movies are like horror anthologies. Have mm-hmm. about like what Fucking five to six. Best. Yeah. yeah. Five to six stories. Uh, they're using the uh, just about the best format for horror films. And yes, they're using the anthology. Yeah. yeah, they're using the uh, found camera footage, but some of them are using them very, very creatively. Yeah. I have to admit, and there's a lot of the, there's a few of the stories that are really, really awesome. I got such oh, a yeah. fucking raging hard on for found footage movies. Not a lot of people like it, but I, I think it adds to that, like, pulling you into that situation. Oh, I yeah, also I think, agree. I also think, though, that it's, I think one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like it is because they've seen enough bad stuff, because it's a, it's a medium, or it's a style of that the medium that's easy to fuck up. It's, it gets yeah. abused, really. Yeah. yeah, it gets abused. It's um, abused and it's easy to fuck up. There's right. also a second ABCs of Death yeah. coming out in November, which misses the mark a little bit, but that's, that's okay. It's, it's a weird uh, group of films, those ABCs films, because... Some of them are horror and some of them are not, but it really does have a, a horror film overall. Yeah. Yeah, and the second movie looks like it's going to be just absolutely bonkers. I haven't even seen the trailer for that. Oh my well, gosh, it's going to be fucking Actually, insane. I haven't seen the trailer for either of those two new ones. Oh, dude, the, um, I'll only tell you like a few things. I saw the first VHS viral Red Band trailer. Huh. One of the sec- one of the stories in it is about like a fucking stage magician. And like so, like the only one I can really remember, cause I, cause it like made, took me back. I was like, "What the fuck?" It's um, the camera is like a security camera in the top corner of a room, and he's sitting at a desk, and there's a girl sitting in the chair across from the desk, and it's a chair like one of these, except you take out like these two sections of the back, so it's like one of those medalist chairs. Yeah. And he says something to her, and then he waves his hand, and she gets fucking sucked backwards into the opening of the back of the chair and nothing comes out the other side and she just fucking straight up vanishes. What? Like, quick as fuck. Like, he's just, like, saying something, like, sadistic and then, like, moves his hand and she just goes... Holy crap. Gone. (laughs) All, like, fucking illusion shit. And it looks nuts. That sounds awesome. CVHS 2, CVHS 1 and 2, CVHS Viral, they're gonna be... They're fucking nuts. Yeah. Especially that second one. Ha, damn. Yeah. The uh, the first one is really good. The first one is a bit more slow-paced horror. The, uh, the yeah, second the first one... and second story... The uh, first and last stories are really good, though. No, yeah, the last story is fucking great. Which one's the last story? The last story's Haunted House. Oh, okay, yes. That's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Boo. There's, there's Haunted House. <laughs> Boo, Haunted House. Yeah. Credit to whoever the fuck initially said that. But, um... The second one is really, really good. It's got some more of the slow pace a little bit. Not as slow paced as like the first one, the um with like the honeymooners. Yeah. That, that one's a slow pace. That's slow pace, but it's got shh, tension out the fucking wazoo. Yeah. Which is great. To, tension is always the best thing to do in a slower kind of horror thing. It just it turns the slow into build up instead of just being like dragging ass. But the um the second one, or at least in my opinion, the second one, the cult is the best one. We're not really going to go into spoilers because we really want you guys to see these because these are just like, even if you don't like found footage, I mean, give them a shot. Uh, I showed them to Drew one time and there were points where he was like, man, this is, 
I don't like that one too much. But actually, his favorite one in the first one turned out to be the fucking the Honeymooners. Huh. That's a bizarre one to like. That, yeah, and even though that was the one he complained about the most because it was so slow, but I think the payoff and, like, the tension buildup is what really got him. Yeah. But, um... Second one's really good. The cult one is good. The one at the end with uh with uh the slumber party. Yes. That one still terrifies the shit out of me just because I was I, I grew up in the, the country for most of my life. Drew thought that one was fucking stupid. Really? Yeah. I didn't see really I like see the, that uh, stupid. I like the one in the woods. You remember that one? Oh yeah. That's a good one too. With the new take on the uh the camera? Yeah, yeah that that's cool. the thing you gotta understand. If you go watch a trailer of the first VHS, you're like, I've seen all these movies before, just longer and more retarded. But, like, there's actually a lot of left field turns for all of them. Yeah. That keep you on your toes because you would never be guaranteed, like, oh, this is just ghosts. Oh, this is just a murderer. Oh, yeah. this is just this. No, there's going to be some kind of left field twist. It's always something a bit more. Something off. Something where they're like, nah, just kidding, bros. This is what's going on. What in the world? Yeah. Also, really like the one uh, in the first one. Yeah, in the first one where it's over the chat. Yes. But I, Ooh, that one is <laughs> definitely creepy. That, okay, one of the best things All kinds of about watching horror. Yeah, about watching horror movies with these guys, especially. Mr. Bass here. And your cousin, actually. I love yeah, that. Drew cousin is punches the, the people. king of that. Drew, punches people like my out of cousin, fear. will full-on scream <laughs> to the point where he won't realize he's screaming until he hears himself, and then he stops. <laughs> but Aaron is one of the funniest people to watch these movies with, because like, anything slightly resembling any kind of like thing that's coming up that you know is going to be around the corner in a dark, dark hallway, or anything with like little kids haunting something in some way. That's a nope. Yeah, you will just, like, you will hear the nope train leaving the station and heading off to Nopeville. <laughs> just from his chair in the room, you'll hear, nope, 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 nope. Ah. <coughs> Man, I, that, I've got to buy myself, like, a fucking 12-pack of Oktoberfest. I've got to find some scary movies. This has got to happen. It's got to happen this October. It's October. Yeah. Well, they got Oktoberfest yeah. sitting in the store. We yeah, they earlier do. today. Yeah, I know, but like, I didn't want to just blow them. I no, I got. I, I get paid at the end of the week. But um, but that chat one. One of the reasons I like that chat one, besides that suspense buildup, like I don't want to watch you watch. Yeah. That was cool. But that that chick is fucking hot. She was. It Holy was weird shit. how how like brainless she was in some ways because I don't know she was. It was kind of sad to see her. Yeah. So pathetic in some ways, you know. But it was like it was also it was also kind of like a des like the way a desperate lonely person would react. Yeah. Someone yeah. who's like who's who's honestly considered. Well, you know what? I don't I don't really need to live anymore. Ugh. That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So that's why she was like fucking, like, doing that shit to her arm and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, fucking watch those movies. VHS, VHS two, um, ABC's of Death. It's, it's pretty good. There's some definite winners in there, like D. And R. And R. Holy shit, R. And if you do not understand R, you ask me, and I'll explain it to you. That's That'll be like but, a thing we have to do, like a video where we just explain R and why that's the best. <laughs> God, that was such uh, a Anyway, so check it out. But there that's... Are, it's it's I mean it's 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 good to watch with a bunch of people. Oh yeah, no definitely because everyone's going everyone's going to have a favorite, and when you have like twenty six stories, or at least in ABC's of Death's case, you have twenty six stories. There's going to be ones you like. There's going to be ones you don't. It's awesome. It's grab. There's bag. Definitely going to be some what the fuck ones. <coughs> it's yeah. kind of like the candy bag. That's of Halloween movies. Yeah, that's, that's a, a really fucking good, good analogy. There's going to be ones you trade. There's going to be ones you throw away. There's going to be ones your parents don't trust. There's going to be ones you don't trust, and you're a kid. Yeah. And then there's going to be ones that are like fuck yeah, like. <laughs> When you go in the fucking big houses and they got like actual like, you know, they're fun size bars, but they got the actual name brand candy you know and trust. Then you go to the other guy's house and they're like, cool, red and blue and green balls. I wonder what they <laughs> taste like. Mm, they taste like shit. Sugar and sugar. <laughs> sugar and shit. Sugar shit. Okay, so there's other horror movies though if you're not into the cutting edge fantasy. Cutting edge fantasy. Cutting edge, <laughs> cutting edge horror movies that are found footage. There's other more traditional movies that you can watch that are really good. Like if you're into werewolves, I would highly recommend An American Werewolf in London. Because That's it's really, really good. That's a classic. Classic. If you're also into werewolf movies, but you like their movies to be complete shit, you can watch Wolfen, which is just 
fucking awful. Just don't watch it. It's yeah. bad. I'm glad I missed that one. That God, that movie was terrible. That movie makes me want to put my eyes out with a red hot. Put- I'll tell you the secret. They're Native Americans that transform into wolves. They're not even really werewolves. They're Native Americans just, that are shape changing wolves. wolves. The twist is what the twist was in Twilight before Twilight even happened. <laughs> but in Twilight, at least Shit. they were like huge monster wolves. Yeah, like these guys just turned into regular wolves. They bit that dude's head off, I think, and that was like the coolest part of the whole movie, but that was it. Yeah. And the f- also, that movie just fucking just drags ass so hard. So, no tension build up. Just <clears throat> like plants your face on the concrete on a hot day and then grabs your ankles and runs. It is bad. It is but American awful. Werewolf in London is awesome because those practical effects are amazing in that movie. Top notch. Also, the tension build up and like the moments of like almost clarity comedy oh, that yeah. are in it that yeah. punctuate it that make it feel like still like this is happening to normal real people like they don't have reactions that are like make you go I mean what the fuck is wrong with this dude he has like perfectly normal human reactions to things it's fucking great what was the um, what was the werewolf movie we watched where the werewolves were like fucking creepy and lanky and shit I think you're thinking of The Howling okay Cause that one, that one was all right, but the werewolf designs in it were freaky as hell. That I think that I think that was the one that we watched. We watched a couple that year. Yeah, whatever it was, it has a bunch of like lanky, creepy ass werewolves. A bunch of them at the end, and like people are like trapped in like a yeah, barn that's or the something. Howl- yeah, that's the howling. Okay, yeah, that's the howling man. <coughs> okay, so the, okay, that's werewolf movies down. There's also vampire movies. You should watch some vampire movies. You should watch Lost Boys. That's a good one. That's yeah. kind of also the '80s encapsulate. Yeah. And it's got um. It's got Big Boss in it. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's hilarious because it's so fucking sad. Well, that's another podcast right there. That's true. Let's talk we need about to... what happened with... <sighs> we, need to, we need to save that disappointment for another day. Yeah. Okay, so you watch The Lost Boys. The Lost Boys is really good. That's like a really cool... That's a good That's a good vampire movie. Yeah. That's a good vampire movie. You also want to watch... Uh... Oh, man, that's the other one that's on that fucking DVD of that 4 collection. It's like Dracula 2000 or some oh, shit. Oh, wow. Or some shit like that. It's like, or no, not even Dracula 2000. It's like, or maybe it is Dracula 2000. I don't know. It's like Wes Craven did it. I don't know. Fucking. Uh, there's lots of Dracula movies. My personal favorite is the one that's just called Dracula that stars Bela Lugosi. <laughs> <laughs> You should watch it because it stars Bella Lugosi. You should also watch like the first 30 minutes of it even if you don't like black and white films. Even if you don't like black and white films and you don't like Dracula films and you don't like vampires and you don't like horror movies, you should watch the first 30 minutes of this Dracula <laughs> film because it's the best 30 minutes of the film because uh, the best part is the beginning because it's the most interesting because you got a guy going into a place, he's new to it, he doesn't know anything about the Carpathian Mountains or anything about fucking Dracula or anything about vampires or anything about all these superstitious people. He's just like this English dude who thinks that he's just going to some eccentric space big house yeah. and it's kind of interesting because like as a viewer not knowing any of that shit I mean I know that shit but I'm just saying you get to kind of like ride along with him and be like this fucking environment and then you see the people and then you're like maybe we should turn back bro I don't yeah. know man that's like how the intro of the book is I started reading it <coughs> I haven't gotten very far but it almost reads like a, a, fi- a found footage film these days because it's like diary entries yeah. Nice. So. yeah Dracula was doing found footage before found footage was even real yeah fucking Baller Pro. So, if you're not watching Dracula, and you're not watching The Lost Boys, then I guess you could always watch, well, I suggested watching a bad movie. No, I didn't really, but I said stay away from this one. I'm trying to think of one for vampires that's bad. And I want to say there's like a lot isn't of there, them. Isn't there one that's actually Dracula 3000 or 2000 where... Oh my god, where Coolio becomes a vampire? Yeah, I never saw it, but you told oh me about god, it. Oh what was that one? I might have been... I can't remember. Those Dracula something thousand movie where like Coolio became a vampire, and that's when me and Seth were like, "That's where Seth couldn't handle it anymore." <laughs> and Seth quite literally was like, "We're done." And I'm like, "Oh man, I'm gonna have to agree with you right now." And I was like, "Okay." And just think about what I said. Coolio, the <coughs> rap star, becomes a vampire, and I don't mean like he's acting like a vampire. I mean he's acting like a vampire, like in the into the way where like fucking the vampires from the first season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer would fucking, <laughs> yes. would fucking slam this dude against the lockers at high school cause they're fucking actually tough <laughs> and Coolio's being retarded. He's quite literally like, <sighs> like fucking moving around and doing the weird head turn <laughs> thing and the hissing and shit. God. And I'm like this is 
so bad. Also, there was no tits in it, and now it's just outright disappointment. But if you want to see a good, kind of scary movie... With tits in it. With tits in it. 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts? I, I was trying to, like, preemptively guess, like... Horror movies have you should know. I'm aware of. You should know. It's, it's the movie we all three have watched and loved. Oh, what? Or go ahead. You're talking <laughs> about... That's right. I'm talking about Cemetery Man. Okay, what? nope. What? Nope, I haven't seen that. <laughs> yep. It's, it's, it's a got good us. kind of quirky movie. It's got not like quirky like, like Michael Sarah, the kind of quirky you want to like shove a rod up his ass and set him on fire. But um, the kind <laughs> of quirky where it's just like a weird kind of offbeat British, British-y kind of story. But it's got a gorgeous girl in it, and she got big ass boobies. So it's, it's a it's a good watch, and it's got zombies and stuff like that, and undead if you like that kind of stuff. We we apologize to our women audience because that just what took it to us. That's a good point. I'm actually I really don't think we're going to. I'm actually a very be very well mannered gentleman, a very well mannered hideous gentleman. But yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if you happen to be female and you're listening to this podcast and you're like, I'm about to shut these guys we're, off because they're retarded. We're no, a don't go. Assholes. Don't go nowhere, we baby. Apologize. We got more. We're ugly. Also, you should watch uh, Dead Alive because that's hilarious. I don't care what. Oh, gender. yeah, that's true. I don't care what. It's a movie you. for women by women. <laughs> what? Dead, dead Alive? Well, you're just talking about apologizing to women <laughs> and then you just go into Dead Alive. <laughs> Did, but that's a movie made by Peter Jackson before Peter Jackson made The Lord of the Rings. But you should see it because it's one of the best zombie movies ever. It's full of outright ridiculousness. There's like a Catholic priest who does kung fu and beats the shit out of zombies. I could go for the Lord. That's the best. But you the know, guy fucking shows up with a goddamn lawnmower and murders the shit out of a bajillion zombies. It's the best. There's so much blood. The movie I think of when and I it's think of horror is uh, Demon Knight. Oh, oh that man! I was trying yeah. to refer to. Hell yeah, Billy Zane is back. So, okay, Demon Knight is at one of the, one of the because multiple of them. Tales of the Crypt movies. You should see Demon Knight because Demon Knight is Billy Zane as a demon. All these people are trapped in this kind of like halfway house with a young Jada Pinkett Smith. With a young Jada Pinkett yep. Smith. And they're all trapped in this halfway house, and Billy Zane and his demon hordes are outside trying to, like, get in, and deep Billy Zane's using his, like, magic and his suave to try and sway the people he's, to, like, come out and give him what he wants. He's and, just so goddamn charming. Yeah, he's so fun and into it as a villain that you immediately buy his performance. And you and want makes, him to win. And admit, yeah, yeah, you kind of, yeah. you want him to win, and it makes the rest of the movie so much more enjoyable. Yeah. Like, he's having so much fun as the villain that it just, like, y- you sold on it right away it's fun it's fun it's a fun movie it's just absolutely kooky and it's got like a pretty original concept i'm not gonna spoil a bunch of shit but you know you got people shooting demons eyes out and shit like that you got green lightning flying everywhere and all these practical effects and stuff it's awesome very rare to see like horror movies with so much practical effects it feels like also if you're talking about practical effects and you're talking about Probably the best actor who's ever walked the face of this planet. You gotta go Evil Dead. And, I mean, the first one is good. I mean, it's 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 pretty bad. But it's necessary to set up that plot and see a young, still just, just really goddamn handsome Bruce Campbell in his starring role <coughs> that made him big in the first place. But my favorite has got to be, and no, not that one. It's not as good as you think. I'm talking about Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2 is where they take the the kind of dull but still still good lore horror from the first one, add that comedy into it that people found, and really just make it what it's supposed to be. He's got the double barrel. He gets the fucking chainsaw hand. He fights demons. He fights the deadites. He fights the fucking force. It is just a really damn good horror movie. And no, I have not seen the remake of Evil Dead. I have. Is that any good? It actually is good. It's it's really solid. It works solidly. I was not sure how it was going to work, but it works really well. And while it doesn't add that element of comedy that we like and that kind of campiness that we were like remember from like the second Evil Dead yeah. or the third Army of Darkness, there are some there is some camera work near the end boy that's just so Sam Raimi. Nice. That it's creepy and it almost has you hoping, like, is this gonna go full kex? Is this gonna go all the way? And it kind of doesn't. But man, if they ever make a sequel and they decide to carry on into like that evolution, 
Oh man, something really special. But no, nah, the, the 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 remake was good. The remake was good, yes. or the reboot, or whatever you want to call it. remake, reboot slash the homage, whatever. The, all those things. Yeah, it was good. I I thought it was really good. I thought it was well executed. I have not seen enough of those films to know. I've only seen what? What did you guys show me? The second one? Man, you haven't even seen Army of Darkness? No. Okay. Yeah, I've seen Army of Darkness. Okay, uh, everyone's seen Army of Darkness. Yeah. Army of Darkness is good. It's the third of the Evil Dead franchise. Well, which one did I actually see? The second one? You? We watched the second one. Man, that's so weird. When you go backwards, though, it's like they get creepier and more solemn. That's true. That's true. I remember you saying that after we showed it to him. So at some point, but you gotta watch the first one. So you gotta watch like the first one, then you watch the second one. It's funnier. Then you watch the third one, and it's just comedy. I fucking love the third one, though, man. Hey, speaking of, speaking of things that are not comedies, the horror movies. You know what? A horror movie that's not a comedy? Thirteen Ghosts. I just remember <laughs> I brought it up. So I'll just remember. Hey, you should go see that movie where Tony Shalhoub forces his family to move into a haunted house, and then Shaggy shows up and he's wearing like sunglasses. And they fucking see ghosts, and there's one of them has railroad spikes. He's kick ass. <laughs> That also, movie one of them's is a naked woman. So ridiculous when you talk about it. Put <laughs> it all together that way. <laughs> also, one of them's a naked woman. She looks hot. <laughs> she like killed people that? in a bathtub or something. I don't even know. I don't know. Some of the ghosts are fucked up. One of them's like a fucking crazy person with a cage around their head, but it's been busted outward. I don't know how she's supposed to bust it outward because like you'd have to like fucking. Well, anyway. So yeah, thirteen ghosts, but it's not bad. It's not a bad horror movie, but it's not like a great horror movie. It came out around the time when they made that remake of. Um, House on Haunted Hill and like The Haunting so like it came out in like the 90s later 90s though by yeah. comparison man that's that's one that's that's another movie House on Haunted Hill that's a good movie the remake ugh you can't see it but just a second ago he was doing stroke face uh, not like not like, ugh, like stroke face like, but like not good stroke it, face it, but like bad face. bad stroke face so like yeah the remake for that is bad the remake for The Haunting is also bad uh, and it's weird because that one has Liam Neeson's in it. <laughs> Liam Neeson's and Owen Wilson my and boy, Catherine Zeta-Jones. I don't know. Fuck. They they chuck the fucking they chuck the fucking remake of The Haunting, all full of these stars, but it doesn't actually help any of them. Also, the first Haunting is just absolutely goddamn terrifying by comparison. <clears throat> like it still skeeves me out watching this shit. Ghosts. <laughs> Ghosts. <laughs> what you what you didn't see is I'm expectantly looking at Aaron, hoping that he'll like put Pre- forth a horror like, movie. Like I like horror movies too. I had a suggestion with Demon Knight. I don't watch as many horror movies as you guys do. Okay, that, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, now if you want to watch a good horror movie that's also really funny, you got two. You got two from the dude that can make movies that are hit or miss. I mean, you got Blazing Saddles, that's a hit. You got Spaceballs, that's a severe miss. I like Spaceballs. Yeah. You like a lot of things. I like a lot of things. <laughs> I agree that he's hit or miss, but I would not call Spaceballs quite a miss. Well, I obviously I'm doing the podcast with two people who are wrong. But, uh... Um... Alright, fine, you don't like... You don't, it's fine you don't like Spaceballs, but I know where this is going. Yeah, beyond that, you've got fucking Young Frankenstein, which is fucking hilarious. And then you've also got Dracula Dead and Loving It, where if you like... Oh my god, I forgot that guy's name. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie fucking Nielsen. If you like Leslie Nielsen, that is perfect. It's Leslie Nielsen as Dracula. I can't He's... hear you while I'm shooting. <laughs> oh man. That that fucking movie. What? Fucking Leslie Nielsen in the naked gun. Oh, where, yeah. Like, like he shows up and it's a trap and the guy shoots at him and the guy's like, got a message for you and he shoots at him and he's dead. He's like, I, I can't hear you and you shoot the gun at the same time. <laughs> oh my god. Like, that movie is fucking the best. But nice. that's why Leslie Nielsen was like the best pull for Dracula, man. But he's it's like it's hilarious. It's got a lot of good uh slapstick. It's got a lot of good prop comedy. It's got a lot of good word comedy. And Dracula's wives are just fucking hot as hell. And they've got the the corset and the billowy blouse that accentuates the bosoms. And God, I really do like boobs. God, that shit when they stake that vampire and all that fucking blood everywhere. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) And when he fucking cuts his finger at the beginning. The thing Uh, is, I still haven't even seen uh, like either of those suggestions. Young Frankenstein or... Oh man, we are remedying that this Halloween. Yeah. Like, those are fucking hilarious. Young Frankenstein is like, is weird because it's like... Actually, both of those movies are weird because it's like they're 
horror, they're comedy movies primarily, but they're based on horror material. So, like, there's a slower, more subdued, more subtle pace to them that you don't quite see. Except for certain parts, obviously. Like, staking fucking that vampire. Or fucking showing off Frankenstein to all those rich people and that <laughs> musical but number. You've got fucking Gene Wilder. Who is brilliant. As Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah, that's better. Like, that's a, you that's have a that comedian and I can't remember his name as Igor. <laughs> that sure. guy is the best. That guy <laughs> is like. E- all right, Igor in that movie's worth it. I don't <laughs> care what you say. Igor in that movie's worth the entirety of the film. Wow. Even if you don't like anything else. That dude crack. That dude cracks me up. Oh man, um, man. I know there's a bunch of other like horror movies. I gotta watch Sleepy Hollow. That's another movie that captures almost the Halloween atmosphere right with down the to the horror s- of Christopher Walken. With, <laughs> with the horror of Christopher Walken on horseback, riding around, saying his one line in that whole movie. Ha! <laughs> his head's off. Oh, so he's doing an impersonation of uh, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, or uh, <laughs> Mickey Rourke laughing. <laughs> But fucking, that movie has, like, all of the perfect things, because it's got, like, the Danny Elfman music with a yep. creepy forest while it's fall. Quite literally, the movie exudes Halloween. With, like, a atmosphere. fucking Tim Burton tree right in the middle of yeah, it. Yeah, like, Halloween kind of... It's filled with heads. Halloween comes out of your TV screen and fills the room with that movie. <laughs> and that's... That's <laughs> that's a good movie. That's, like, that's not as good as I got, like... Now, talking about that, I'm talking about Burton... You guys consider Nightmare Before Christmas more of a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? That's a very difficult question because it takes place on both holidays. So quite literally, you have to watch it in November because it's in between. Yeah, that's a good place to look at it. But I would also just I would really mainly consider it a Halloween movie. Same. Yeah. Main characters from Halloween Town. I would watch it for Halloween, and it'd be perfectly fine. If you watch it for Christmas, it feels kind of weird. Yeah. So I would watch it for Halloween. I don't have a copy of that. But the but the big thing is he's delivering the presents on Christmas Eve. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but it's still creepy. Yeah, I was gonna say, this whole movie's still creepy. Fair enough. So, I know there's some other horror movies that I need to, like, recommend. See, we've got, we've done uh, ghost stuff. We've done found footage. We have done vampires. We've touched on comedy. Touched on comedy. We touched on comedy, we touched on Frankenstein. We touched but- on demons and zombies. I was going to say Frankenstein. If you're Frankenstein. Looking for, if you're looking for a real Frankenstein movie, though, you should actually watch like the original black and white Frankenstein, especially the now that you can get it. best of the Universal Monsters. Now that you oh, can yeah. get it like in its entirety, you can actually see all the shit that they had in there, and it's like, Jesus Christ, this movie's What about other good. zombie films? Dark. Like Resident Evil? Or like, um, say... I know. Later. I said like, I said like Resident Evil because like I the first one. Yeah. Twenty eight days later is really good, but actually speaking on Resident Evil, they're they're okay. Yeah. Except for the most recent one, which is just fucking goddamn awful to watch. Yes. But awesome at the same time because it has Barry Burton and Leon S. Kennedy in it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dream come true. It's amazing and the so, dude, and and Ada Wong. And they all look like spot on as fuck. Well, the, we saw, uh, me and Justin saw Resident Evil 2, like, uh, recently enough. Is it the yeah. one with Nemesis? Yes. And it also had Ada Wong. That shit was stupid. Yeah. That movie was, Resident Evil movies are dumb as hell, but god darn do I like bad movies, and god darn do I want to watch that entire franchise, like, in a marathon. It would be great. It would also be so t- trying, I, I imagine. Like, after we got to the fir- third one, we'd be like, Ah, uh, nah, man. I don't know, but I might. I think I could probably weather. I think I could weather that storm, and if I had alcohol, I know I could weather that storm. <laughs> Man, alcohol introduce alcohol into that mix, and it just becomes like somebody's throwing up or falling asleep. Now, see, speak, uh, speaking also about like video game movies, particularly video game horror movies. My favorite, oh my, video sweet game Christ. Fran- what? Continue. My favorite video game franchise, hands down, is Silent Hill. Now <laughs> we saw the sequel for that man. Yo, the sequels, we, the sequels, not that good. The no, yeah, the Dark the, Carnival. The, the yeah, we saw that sequel, the sequel, and hot, hot diggity damn, that Dark Carnival music video was fucking fantastic. <laughs> fucking goddamn. Oh, it. there. Unfortunately, like like the first one, while it's okay as a horror movie and like not really that all that faithful to the to the game, 
Except in creature design, which is fucking like, <laughs> spot on. I can't except wait for that except new one. fucking I don't really play them. Pyramid head. <laughs> that's, that's for oh my god, that's for another time. Yeah, I'm gonna flip shit. We talk about that, <laughs> but um, while like of course Pyramid Head's not in the first one. That's James' manifestation, but I could be here all day. But um, the first movie is is still pretty good. It kind of it captures the essence of the town itself very well. It captures the essence of someone being trapped in said town, and I mean it's it's good. Unfortunately, the second movie. While it had a shit ton of stuff from the game itself in there, granted, it also threw a lot of things that weren't in the game, like the mannequin monster that like was a full CGI, but some of its movement was pretty fucking creepy. And it threw in like the carousel with Dark Heather, but all the other stuff they do to exude all this stuff, it just went about it the wrong way. They tried to over-exemplify things and just, like, over-movie-eyes things to try to make it more of a spectacle of itself than the legit kind of horror that it was originally meant to be. So, granted, I, I find those things, of course, I mean, no fucking shit are much better in game form, but the first movie's not that bad. And if you like Silent Hill, give the, give the second one a shot. I mean, you're going to be like, oh, cool is that? I remember playing that part. But then a lot of times you're going to be like, ugh, what in the fuck is yeah, going no, on? Right? I mean, Jon Snow! <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know anything, though. Yeah. And also, like, fucking... Because that second movie, it's like, if you're not going to see the second movie, I'll sum it up for you quickly in a nutshell that doesn't spoil shit. She, she goes to fuck... She has a nightmare about the dark carnival, sees herself as a juggalo, and then fucking Pyramid Heads are totally <laughs> fucking fights some other monster because fucking monster battles. Yep. The end. That's the, not and right. Also, I don't think Sean Bean died. Spoiler alert. Sean Bean... Actually, that is a spoiler alert. Sean Bean didn't <laughs> die in that movie, and usually he bites the dust... And like no wait no yeah yeah no he didn't die yeah, yeah. and uh, like I'm like no I'm just I'm just kidding Christian Bale shot him in that church shit no I'm sorry he just got shot to death by orcs no I'm sorry <laughs> shit he just, Harrison Ford fucking ran his ass on top of a fucking no, spike don't you mean he got beheaded like, uh yeah no he got pulled, he got drawn and quartered yeah <laughs> yes besides all that it's unfortunate that the uh, Silent Hill revelation is yeah, that that's it, it I think. is that the movie title that everyone's using nowadays. But um, it's a shame it didn't make enough to spawn another one, because the way they had set it up with uh, Sean Bean's character, who's, who's Harry Mason, the um, the protagonist from the first game, and uh, who's around in the third game, but not in that kind of capacity. You know what I'm talking about if you've played it. But um, they set it up in a pretty pretty clever way, where he goes wandering into Silent Hill looking for his wife. Now, a lot of people be like, yeah, he never goes in Silent Hill looking for his wife. But if you think about it, that's the entire reason James goes to Silent Hill in Silent Hill 2. Now, if they had made enough money in the sequel to make yet another one, make a third installment, they could have easily had Sean Bean starring as Harry Mason in a very James Sunderland storyline searching for his wife within Silent Hill, coming across monsters that were formed from his own psyche, and it could have been a really really good one man journeying through Silent Hill kind of creep fest like the, like the better parts of the first movie but set to the events of the best game and there's anything Sean Bean can do it's be all weather worn and fucking wandering around That's and doing true stuff as shit he could have pulled that stuff by himself fuck yeah oh, he's amazing he's in, my, he's in my casting for the Dark Souls movie but we'll get to that another time that's true this is true. Just to make a wish list, and then fucking 100 podcasts later, we'll be like, what are we talking about now? And 100 podcasts later, we'll be going, hey, it's our 100th podcast, and in celebration, we're going to have 20 minutes of silence. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be our Out of Ideas podcast. So, I, I have a one last question if we're rounding towards the end. Okay. Um, fast zombies or slow zombies? Slow zombies. Slow zombies, easily. I'll tell you why. You get to see the epitome... This actually hails back to another horror movie that we watched using Seth's Netflix. Sorry, Seth. We used your Netflix when we were house-sitting. Suck it. Yeah, yeah, I will. So anyway, we watched World War Z, where I watched Brad oh, Pitt God. be the luckiest man on the planet. But fucking... God. Hot, hot diggity, hot, hot garbage. <laughs> like, those zombies were just outright ridiculous. That was outright ridiculous. 
I'm sorry, but, like, zombies have gotten fast to combat the threat of putting people to sleep in theaters. I don't know why they're fast. They're just fast nowadays. Just trust me, they're fast. And I you know enjoy- what? Well, I, was, I bring that up because I enjoy, you know, like, 28 Days Later. Even though it's kind of not... I, even, I enjoy 28 not, Days not Later. That's a good zombies movie. zombies at that point. Yeah. They're just, they're just really quote, unquote, I, affected. I, yeah. yeah. But, you know... They they're not slow in the traditional sense, but it's still enjoyable, you know, and it's a good it's a good film. Yeah. But uh yeah, no, I think there is more credit to slow zombies and I think, you know, you guys are both on that train for a good reason, you know. There's more credit to zombies than I think people give them whatever. People are, people have very different lots of people have different ideas about like what zombies represent and yeah. why they're scary and I use square scary scary in He's using quotes. In quotation marks. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, I use scary in quotation marks. There's a lot of different reasons why people find them scary, and a lot of the people are like, are like, oh man, it's about consumerism or something. Yeah. Some shit. I personally like to think of zombies not as a representation of consumerism, but as a representation of conformism. That's a good way to look at it. Because you have a group of people that... Like, and then people are like, it's consumerism, because they're like, they never stop eating or whatever. But what the fuck have you ever seen the zombie actually finish a goddamn person? They never actually finish their meal, even though they're always eating. They're always moving on to the next thing. But the point is, you have a group of people that is growing larger and larger by the number, and they can recognize people who are not in their group, and then they can go and, through violence, if they have to, which they have to, because they're zombies... Turn that person into a part of their group. Yeah. Like, yep. no one ever goes, no one ever didn't, no one ever, like, oh, I was killed by zombies, and then was just dead. That's incredibly rare. They're dead from zombies, and then now they're also a zombie. So it's an us versus them kind of thing, just... Yes. It's like a weird us versus them kind of thing, where the zombies represent a group of people or things or an idea that slowly but violently takes over and, like, just over-dominates the hearts and minds of men, if you will. Well, that's true. Like, that's for- why zombies are scary, to me, in terms of their more metaphorical concepts. Now, now for me, uh, slower zombies, I find that I like them better, because, I mean... Overall, just like as monsters, they're they're more threatening, because with fast zombies, it's like, oh man, they're coming, and he's, he's got you. You have no time to be scared. These things roam. They will eventually find one another and roam in packs. Uh, a lot of times, uh, more often than not, zombies can find people by hearing. Not sure why, that the auditory senses are what leaves and lingers on. But that's a lot of reason why, like, zombies will find people. But uh, some people do smell, some people do sight, whatever. But the slower zombies, I mean, you got to think the body is r- rotting underneath them. So they're going to be moving slow because things are slowly just decaying. And, like, to me, that also helps explain, like, in games like, like the first Dead Rising, where you can just easily fucking cleave through zombies. And that's awesome. I mean, I enjoy zombies that attack en masse so they can surround a place and leave you wondering, oh man, when are their number finally going to be enough to bust in through this place and I'm going to have to get out of here fast because I'm already surrounded and the longer I wait, the worse my situation gets. So, like, the slow moving, while not as, like, immediately threatening, the build-up of just, like, having to face an entire horde of these things is threatening. And even though they're rotting and you should be able to cut them down easily, these fuckers don't feel pain. I mean, they're rot- they're breaking and down on the inside and yet they're still shambling around. They lose their legs. They're still going to be crawling after you. You got to destroy the brain, which is another like I mean classic staple and if you don't go with that then you got to have a damn good reason. Yeah, I've also heard it's uh they're nicer. I mean like they're more scary because of the fact that it's it's more de- demoralizing to be able to have to stare into what you're going is trying to eat you, you know, or is like slowly coming towards you. It's more agonizing and more tension building oh, exactly. to have the threat, you know, be always in view and always coming towards <coughs> you slowly. Mhm. Having a good look at what you're going what's going to kill you. Yeah, it's like the um it's like a, it's, well, it's, it's, like you said, it was, it's tension. It's the building fear. Yeah. It's not just like a lot of times, like, 
slasher movies or other monster movies where it's just like, oh man, I wonder where it is, and then it fucking jumps out, and they don't even have a split second to scream, and then they're dead. Yeah. And they don't need to worry about it anymore. And this one, it's just like constantly going. Like things like <clears throat> The Walking Dead. That's a, that's a fucking really good show, except for the second season, because it turns into like fucking Wolves in the Kala. But it's a good show, and like one of the first episodes in the first season the main character Rick ends up with these this guy and his son and they haven't left their house and the reason they haven't left their house is because the boy's mother this guy's wife is lingering in the neighborhood and the husband cannot bring himself to shoot his wife huh because he sits up in the second story with a rifle makes his son stay downstairs they have all the windows boarded up and just read. Like, he just says, go read your comic books. And he sits up there, and every single fucking day, he looks down the scope of this rifle, picks off a few zombies in the neighborhood, only when he must, just because the noise attracts more. And he always lights that scope, eventually finds his wife, and he freezes. He can't do that. And that's the thing he has to get past in order to, in order to leave. And... I mean, long story short, at the end of the episode, Rick leaves and they remain because of this. Because with the slower zombies, since you have that time, since you have that build-up, yeah. you eventually, and in a lot of movies, you're going to see people you used to know trapped in this. And that's just even that more fear. It's like, they turned into this? Holy fuck, I could turn into this. Yeah. And you can't, like, that causes that, like, concreted fear where you can't move. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's just what adds to it. Mm-hmm. But, anyway, thanks for joining us. I hope you got some good ideas for some Halloween classics. Happy Halloween, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> both, both, both new and old. And hopefully ours, if anything, if you can get past all of our, all of our opinions and find something that's enlightening to you, maybe made you think about something in a way you hadn't considered before, well then, good shit, we did our job. If you find good movies, throw them our way, because... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's recommends shit. Yeah, throw in the comments if you like movies that you like to watch around this time of year. Even if they're not exactly Halloween movies, just scary movies, movies that you like for this time of year, just throw them and tell us why. But thanks for joining us for another edition of our podcast, and remember, it's a trick. Get an axe.